Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Today I'll be talking about fray block, cotton and steel hanky fabric, suede cording. I'll be announcing the winner of the Sizzix Makers Challenge, and I'll be reviewing three books by Pat Sloan and giving you another sneak peek into my new minikins. Okay, just as a friendly reminder, everything that I talk about uh, in Social Sunday, the notions, fabrics, and new products, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about what I've talked about, just click to that link in the description and you can find out more. And as always, everything from the notions to the fabrics are things that I've purchased myself. Um, and are just cool things that I want to share with you. So I just want to say hello really quick to a few people that are just jumping into the chat. Um, hi to Karen. Hi Priscilla, Tamara, Gwenna, Arletta, Paula. I see a lot of familiar faces every week, so thanks so much for joining me. And thank you to those of you who are tuning in to the first time. I hope you enjoy the chat. So my favorite part of the chat is my notion of the week. And this week I'm talking about Fray Black, which is a seam sealant. Uh, there are other brands available such as Fray Check, but basically this is a liquid that prevents fabric from fraying. And the most common use that I have for Fray Black is when I'm installing magnetic snaps. Um, so to install a magnetic snap, if you're not familiar, you make two slits in your fabric and the magnetic snap has two prongs on them. And so those go through the right side of the fabric and then you just open the prongs to the snap outward. And I always like to use a bit of the fray block on the fabric after I make the slits because this liquid will prevent um, the fabric from fraying and because the magnetic snap is basically inserted through holes in the fabric, I just like that extra stability that the, the fray block gives to the fabric. So um, I'm very curious. I mostly use the fray block for magnetic snaps, but if you use seam sealant for some of your other projects, let me know in the comments if you use it for anything else besides magnetic snaps. I'm really curious to know, but again, uh, this is the fray block. Okay, so what I've been working on this past week is we shot a few more tutorial videos um, my promised rivet press tutorial is finally going to be shown this week on Facebook Live. Uh, we shot it a couple days ago and my husband's editing the video right now. Um, I apologize, last week we were supposed to start our two new uh, Facebook Lives on Tuesday and Thursday and my whole family got sick and also last Monday we started some home renovations so we basically gutted half of our first floor and we're getting new flooring and a kitchen and things have just been sort of a bit frazzled around here lately um, in addition to being sick. Uh, so I apologize, but uh, we've already shot the pre-recorded content for this week's two new uh, Facebook Live videos. So we'll have uh, Tuesday evening is called Ask Sarah and that's at 7 p.m. Central Time. And I'll be showing a new sewing tutorial as requested by my readers and that will be the rivet press video and I will also be answering some of your questions live so be sure to tune in then and then Thursday will be stitched in with Sarah so I will be working on a sewing project live and it's basically motivation for you to get working on your own sewing projects whether it be a UFO or starting a new project um, I wanted us to be sewing together and so I'll be showing interviews uh, customer photos um, and I find most of the customer photos from my closed Facebook group so if you've been making some of my bags make sure to post the photos of your finished projects in my So Sweetness fans Facebook group and we glean photos from that every week for posting on social media so Instagram Twitter Facebook um, and I love to see the photos I love to comment on them and share them as well so be sure to share them in the group and I'll be showing a few photos every week on Stitched In With Sarah and again that's Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. Okay so my fabric of the week that I just added to my stash is fabric that I purchased from Stitch Supply Company and you can either shop online or they have a brick and mortar store in Appleton, Wisconsin and the fabric that I purchased is 
uh, by Cotton and Steel from the Beauty Shop fabric line, and it's called Hanky. And so, um, as you can see, these are uh, panel prints, and they're sort of large-scale graphics. And the reason that I wanted to purchase these to use in my sewing room is that I saw a photo on Instagram of this particular panel made into a small pillow, and I thought it was really cute and really quick to come up with something that looks really nice, and they'd be great for um, large zipper pouches as well. Um, I love this Mustang print, and the typewriter is another of my favorites, and it comes in two different colorways, so that was the first one, and the second one is, um, I guess, more warm color, so this is the the second colorway of the hanky fabric. And again, this is by Cotton and Steel. The fabric line is called Beauty Shop, and this particular print is called Hanky. So really excited to get to use these in some small pillows and zipper pouches. And another thing that I added to my sewing room this week is um, suede-like cording. And uh, let me show you the cording in the finished project first. So this was made for, for me by my friend Christy from Rock Baby Scissors. And the zipper pulls uh, she made with this suede-like cording. And uh, this is quick and easy, and this uh, particular fabric doesn't fray, so it's nice to use for the zipper pulls. I found these on Etsy, and they come in a lot of different colors. Uh, let me try to hold these up here. So as you can see, there, that's a lot of different colors. These are three millimeters in thickness and um, easy to coordinate with projects and all of these rolls will last a really long time because you only need a little bit for a zipper pull but um, I'm excited to have these in my fabric stash not that I need more things to add to the stash but I thought these were really cool so again I found these on Etsy and if you want to find out more about these just click to the link in the description okay so I'm excited to announce uh, the Sizzix Makers Challenge winner for the month of September, um, I partnered with Sizzix to host a contest for um, one lucky winner to post a project that they made from one of my Sizzix dies that came out earlier this spring. So either the box pouch, uh, the coin purses, or the purse tabs. And um, in setting up this contest with Sizzix, we decided it was going to be a random winner because we didn't want people that were either newer sewists or people that were new to making bags to feel like they couldn't enter the contest, that their projects might not be good enough. And I firmly believe that sewing is a learn, learn something new everyday process. And I never want people to feel discouraged that they can't make a sewing project. And so uh, the name of the Maker's Challenge winner is Elizabeth Ray. And in the overlay, you can see the photograph of her finished project. And Elizabeth used fabric designed by Tula Pink for Free Spirit Fabrics. And on the front of her box pouch, she accented it with a bit of uh, Renaissance ribbons, also designed by Tula Pink. So congratulations to Elizabeth. Elizabeth won a set of fabrics from Free Spirit Fabrics and a prize package from Sizzix that included a machine and some dyes. And the dyes included were my new fall 2017 dies, uh, which I'll be talking about on a future social Sunday, but uh, big congratulations to Elizabeth. Um, all right, so my, my book review for this week is for not one, but three books. And these books are written by Pat Sloan. So the first book is Teach Me to Make My First Quilt. And I know there's a lot of bag makers out there uh, because I make bags and I'm assuming uh, you're following me for not only the sewing content, but for the bag making content. And I know not every uh, bag maker also makes quilts, but I, I find that it's a really relaxing process, especially if you're working on um, kind of a, a simpler quilt design. And so the first of the three books, again, is Teach Me to Make My First Quilt. And in the overlay, you can see some photographs from some, some of the projects in the book. And um, Pat Sloan takes you from beginning to end on making your first quilt. And these are all uh, straight line quilt blocks that come together easily. And um, I feel like um, great to dip your toes into the water of quilt making by either using pre-cuts or a bundle of fabric, maybe for a particular fabric line. So um, again, this is uh, Teach Me to Make My First Quilt by Pat Sloan. So the second book in the series is Teach Me to Machine Quilt. So 
I enjoy making quilts, but machine quilting was always sort of a frustrating process for me, and I never quite knew um, how to start uh, doing it. And if you're not familiar with quilting, uh, machine quilting is the process of attaching the quilt top to the batting and the backing. And I think this book does a brilliant job of holding your hand through the whole entire process from what thread weight to use, um, what tools you'll need and what feet you'll need um, on your sewing machine, and also troubleshooting um, things that, that might go wrong and how to fix them. And in addition to uh, the machine quilting process, there's also some quick patterns, quilt patterns in the book. Um, so you can make the project and then machine quilt it. And there's some smaller projects as well. So you don't necessarily have to machine quilt um, a full large quilt. You can start off with either a mini quilt or a table runner and get sort of practicing. And there's also some free motion quilting included in the book as well. And my favorite of the three is uh, Pat Sloan's Teach Me to Sew Triangles. And my absolute favorite part of this particular book is that there's a lot of step-by-step -step photographs in the book. If you're familiar with any of my sewing patterns, you know that I use step-by-step -step photos in my own patterns as well. And I really appreciated that Pat Sloan used a lot of those same type of step photos in her book because sometimes the illustration just doesn't quite do it. And so um, I don't know if you can see, yeah, here's the, the step photographs and step-by-step -step, she takes you through um, cutting the triangles and sewing them together because there's a lot of different methods, but um, having those photographs and the precise steps for putting them together is really helpful. And let's put some more photographs back in the overlay, but these are some of the, the quilt projects that are included in the book. And I think they're beautiful projects and um, combining those three books by Pat Sloan will really help you um, if you're a new quilter or you just need sort of a refresher course, um, get you uh, making quilts and quilted projects. So uh, those are the three books by Pat Sloan. Okay, so in place of my sewing tutorial this week on Social Sunday, um, if you've been following me on social media, you've n perhaps noticed I've been showing sneak peeks for my new minikins that are coming out on October 23rd. And the minikins are 12 new patterns and 12 videos to go along with them for smaller projects. And you might have guessed by the name minikins that they'd be small projects, but these are all patterns that are about 15 steps or less. So quick projects can be made by any skill level. And most of them take um, a fat quarter each for the exterior and lining and just a little bit of interfacing. So right now you're seeing some of the photographs that I showed for the first four Minikins projects. And all of the projects except two use a zipper. And I know sometimes, especially quilters, feel a little bit nervous about using zippers, but I'm really confident that the pattern in combination with the videos will uh, get you really excited about sewing with zippers and making these projects. And if you happen to be one of those bag makers that makes uh, accessories and bags to sell online or at craft fairs, I think you'll be really excited about these projects because um, again, they don't take a lot of supplies, they come together quickly. And one of my pattern testers, um, my pattern testers are wrapping up with the patterns uh, this weekend. And one of my pattern testers, Melissa from Melissa Jane Handmade, made all 12 patterns in all of the sizes and she's saving them up for her Christmas a craft market. So again, these are great for the holidays, craft fairs, things like that. And um, I debated whether to show um, actual full pictures or video of the projects before they come out on October 23rd, but I decided to because it was too big of a secret to keep. And so uh, behind me on the table, I have one of the projects. This is called uh, the Sidewinder Pouches. And these are, again, three different sizes of pouches. So here's the small, which is perfect for pencils or school supplies and uh, medium right here. Uh, I love the pink fabric. These are fabrics designed by Becca Bryan for Robert Kaufman fabrics. And this fabric line is called Panache. And I think the stripes lend themselves really well to these projects because this particular pouch, um, the fabric wraps around from the front to the back. And uh, the black and white one is my favorite. And this is great for um, toiletries and, and carry-on luggage. But again, this one was 15 steps, uh, came together with fat quarters. It's got the zipper closure uh, with the handle on one end 
And I think uh, I'm really excited about these minikins coming out. Uh, but again, these are coming out on October 23rd. If you want to be the first to hear about them, sign up for my newsletter. The link is in the description. And I'm going to check on some of the comments right now. Um, Karen says, will we be able to purchase minikins as a package? Yes, they will be a package of all 12 patterns plus the videos. And I've also decided to break them up into sets of three. So perhaps the set of 12 is not in your budget. Um, we'll have four sets of three patterns each and those will be pre-specified. And so you can purchase one of the smaller packages uh, if you wish, but I think all 12 of the patterns are, um, to me, they, they're really exciting and I think you'll probably want to, to own the whole bundle. Um, Tara had a comment. She said, hope we can get the new dies in the UK as we cannot get your current ones. I'm so sorry to all of the viewers out there in the UK. Um, hopefully Sizzix will be working on getting um, the dies readily available in the UK, but um, until then I do have them available on my website and I do ship worldwide. Um, and I also will be posting a link to, um, for those of you in Australia, there's a shop that will be carrying them in Australia as well. Um, let's see. Louise said, uh, may have to get myself a birthday gift on the 23rd, Minikins. Um, and Catherine said, early Christmas for me. So thank you so much. I'm so happy that you're excited with those little bits that I've shown you so far about the Minikins. Um, I hope everybody will want a set. And again, we'll have videos with all of the patterns as well. So again, quick projects, uses fat quarters, videos. So um, to me, it sounds like a win-win. Um, Let's see, Beverly says, great gifts to share with others, and I definitely agree. Uh, so these are the minikins, minikins, again, out on October 23rd. All right, so on to the giveaway for this week, and the giveaway are these three books from Pat Sloan that I talked about earlier in the book review segment, and again, these are all signed by Pat Sloan, and I choose one winner, one random winner, at the end of the day on October 14th to win this full set of books. And all you have to do to enter the giveaway is to leave me a comment below in, uh, to answer my giveaway question. And my question is, tell me how you like to read sewing books. Do you prefer a physical copy or do you buy eBooks to keep on your um, iPad or your other device or to read from your computer? So just let me know in the comments if you prefer physical sewing books or eBooks and I'll choose a random winner at the end of the day on October 14th. So that was Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you again um, next Sunday uh, at 5 p.m. Central Time. And uh, the overlay graphic in the corner of the screen is um, from Pat Sloan's radio show, um, American Patchwork Quilting Radio. I'll be on her show tomorrow, which is Monday, October 9th. The show airs live at 4 p.m. Um, Eastern Time and if you miss the the live broadcast you can listen at any time and you can listen from um, the iTunes store um, on your Android device or you can um, be linked to uh, a computer listen to it um, on Pat's website so again that's tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time on American Patchwork and Quilting Radio so thanks so much for joining me I'll see you this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time on Ask Sarah.